Peace family, I want to welcome you to this edition of the Reading and Writing in the Dark podcast. This is Ayapo Yapa. I am the author of Melanin, a novel. It's available on both Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It's available for the Nook, which is Barnes and Noble's digital format, and for the Kindle, which is Amazon's digital format. They're available on both platforms in hardcover and softcover editions. And even if you don't own digitally a uh, a Nook or a Kindle, you can still download the app for free for either of those platforms. And uh, then you can read them on your computer, on your tablet, even on your phone. Uh, I'd like to apologize in advance, as I always do. This is a fancy studio. It's not soundproof, so you may hear my wife in the background because she coaches English, and also there are uh, there's wildlife out there, so you may hear birds or whatever, uh, and you and you might, may also hear traffic. So, all that said, just like that. <laughs> All that said, I'm here for this Ring and Writing in the Dark to talk a little bit about why I write. I may have spoken about it before, but I think it bears repeating, or it's worth repeating. It's that one of the reasons that I write is that uh, not only do I want to take control or help to take control of our narrative as, as black people so that I can help to present our people to our people in a positive light and a correct light. I also, and this is part of my my own journey, I'm trying to imagine a world. And what I mean by that is, imagine if you will, a world where our people were never enslaved. Imagine a world where we're not subject to the chaos and the whims of a people who are out of control. And I'm not talking about black people. I'm talking about people extraneous to us who are just totally out of control and literally destroying the planet and destroying the world. And what does a world look like when you're not having to deal with that? Uh, if I can use a, if I can use a quick analogy, it would be like it's, it's tantamount to living in an apartment and in your individual apartment you may keep it clean you keep it pristine you take you, you, you do everything possible to take care of it you're very conscientious about making sure you know things are turned off and like, you're very conscientious but then you're inside of a building where everybody else in the building is not conscientious at all. Who they 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 leave the stove burning. Uh, they leave things on the stove that may burn. They leave water running. They may flood their place and then run down to where you are, and so on. So you're in this situation where it doesn't matter how well you do or what you're doing right. You are in this bubble of people who are destroying things. And uh, frankly, I look at our situation in that way sometimes. Uh, we we have discussions and we talk about it outside of that bubble, but in a real world, this, the, the things that are happening to our people aren't happening in a vacuum. And there is a, there are, there's a bigger conversation that needs to be had. Because when we're talking about uh, things like uh, uh, being part of a capitalist system and so on and so forth. Um, I don't know if everyone's keeping up on current events, but this system presently is being held together with popsicle sticks and bubble gum. It is crashing if it hasn't already crashed and it's just being propped up right now. And so my point is that uh, as a separatist, I'm like, you know, we need to be separating and getting out of the system. And the reason we need to be getting out of it is because it is it is about to collapse in a way that is obvious. I personally feel that it has already collapsed and we just haven't seen the effects of it yet. But if it hasn't, 
and it's on its way to collapse. And so, you know, again, and I, I'm not the one who, who coined this because I've heard other people say it before me. It's, it's like, you know, trying to get the nicest stateroom on the Titanic while it's sinking. You need to be getting off the ship. You need to be jumping ship. Um, you know, all of that said, because that's actually a little bit on the side. All I'm trying to say is that through my writing, through my wife's writing, through the writing of, uh, of pro-black writers who I deal with, you know, brother Amawale Africa might uh, take issue with me using the term pro-black. He, he is, that's one of the places where he and I have a nuanced uh, disagreement. I think that uh, pro-blackness is a real thing. Uh, and I'll, I'll just give a real quick shorthand to that. Um, the shorthand is, if you believe that there's a such thing as being anti-black, and I do, um, I don't. I don't know if he does or not. Maybe he, you know, maybe he'll answer uh, and say whether you know what he thinks about that. But if you believe that there's a thing as being anti-black, then there has to be such thing as being pro-black. If there is an up, then just by virtue of that, there has to be a down. If there's a right, just you know, by virtue of right existing, there has to be a left. So if there is a anti-black, then there has to be a pro-black. Um, the, the definition, admittedly, is nebulous. Uh, I, I don't disagree with that. It's because people say it for all kinds of stuff. But just because, just because people screw with the definition of a thing, doesn't mean that that thing isn't real and that it doesn't have a definition you know um, so anyway that's a that's a different discussion for a different day but as a as a pro-black writer i am seeking to imagine a world imagine a world where our people again have never been enslaved where we're not having to deal with the consequences of uh, being surrounded by madness that is not of our creation or doing. Uh, a world where, uh, I'll put it like this, I, I, I often talk about uh, flying cars and jetpacks, and I use that as kind of a shorthand for what would our people do, how would our people do it if our energies didn't have to be focused on just surviving and just getting a boot off our neck. You know, we can't, we can't create the, and we still do, we still do. But I'm saying in, in mass and in a big way, we can't create the flying car, the jetpack, and so on, because we're so focused on trying to get this boot off our neck. And it's not, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that that's not something that we need to be focused on because we do because we're, we can, because there's a boot on our neck. But what I'm what I'm going at is or what I'm going after is before you can do a thing, you have to envision that you can do a thing. Or you have to envision that it's possible. If if uh, when I hear people who give up, who basically throw their hands up and say, well, we've lost and we need to just uh, give in to their systems and so on. That is the viewpoint of a person who can't see anything other than where we are. That's the, uh, you can hear my wife now, so one of her students just came in. But that is the viewpoint of a person who cannot see or imagine anything outside of this system. I'll close, I'll close by saying this because I really don't want to stay up here long. If there were a contest to create an engine, right? A, 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 a new kind of engine. Let's say it like that. If there were a contest to create a new kind of engine, and 90%, 95% of the people who uh, took part in this contest were raised, were born and raised knowing nothing but the internal combustion engine. That's, that's all they know. 
that's from the moment they were born until that until that time. That's all they were raised with. That's the only knowledge they have. And then there's five percent of the people who had never heard of an internal combustion engine, had never seen one, had never. All they know is what an engine does. That's all that's told to the contestants. This is what an engine does. Make one. I can almost guarantee that of that 95, everything that they came up with, everything they came up with that was supposedly quote unquote new, would be some riff on an internal combustion engine. Because that because that is their and that's their foundational premise. That's that's what they're you know, that's all they know. And then they're like, well, how can I tweak this? How can I move it around? How can I rearrange this to make it do this or make it do that? But no matter what they do, is some kind of a rip on an internal combustion engine. Whereas the 5% who had never heard of an internal combustion engine will come with engines that run on air or water or, or, or whatever. That, 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 run, that, that run on thought patterns, you know, anything because, they're, because their mind is free and it's, and, they're, and it's outside of the construct. And I say, and I said that to say, when it comes to something like a capitalist system, I hear our people, and when they're talking, it, it, it sounds like we're, we're talking about something new, but it's always some kind of a riff on capitalism, as opposed to something totally unrelated, something completely new, something unheard of, something unthought of. Because we're, because we're unable to think outside that box because that's all we've known and that's all that we've seen. And there's also the factor of uh, having that look like it's the uh, it's what you want. In, in other words, I want the I, I want to uh, I don't know I don't even know what iPhone is out now. Let's just say the iPhone 14. Well, I want an iPhone 14 because the iPhone that I have right now is a 13.958. And the, and the new one has one more app on it than the old one that I have. In other words, it's always chasing something that's newer. You know, as opposed to just totally thinking outside the box and saying, we don't have to live like this. We need to come up with something new and something that's really new and unrelated to this, to this mess. So... Again, it, it sounds like I, I got off track, but it, but I really didn't. That's why I write. That's the type of things that I write. That's the type of things I write about. Um, sure, I write some stuff that may lean toward a slave narrative. I write some things that might lean toward like more traditional uh, subjects. Uh, they're, they're always going to tend to tend to lean toward uh, like theoretical evidence fiction. But in that. I write about us winning, and I have one specific project that I'm working on right now that is purely based upon the thought that I'm, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna say it because if I say it, it'll, it'll, it'll give it away, and I don't want to do that. So anyway, that's just some food for thought. That's what I was thinking about this morning, and um, as always. I'm going to close up. I, I want to uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for purchasing melanin. Um, I'm very excited and very uh, humbled, genuinely. I'm truly humbled that so many of you out here uh, are purchasing melanin and enjoying it. And uh, just the, the feedback that I've gotten on it and everything. Uh, right now, I also have... Uh, some of my short stories that are coming out there on Amazon and they're quick reads if you're in a like a waiting room or just about to go to bed or just relaxing on a lunch break or whatever they're quick reads and uh, one is called Scars the other one's called Person Zero on Friday the next installment because it's called Keeping It A Buck Series because the stories are only a dollar a piece and uh, the story is Keep It A Buck so it literally and figuratively they are keeping it a buck 
uh, the next story to come out is going to be a piece of darkness. And there's stories for us by someone who loves, honors, and respects our people. And uh, I'm just so, uh, I'm happy, I'm happy with my work. So having said all that, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will talk to you again soon. If you're a reader, keep on reading. And if you're a writer, keep on writing. And go visit my website, ayapoyapa.com, and sign up for the monthly newsletter. It's free. Talk to you soon. Peace.